Bringing the vision into a mission, this is a global mission of peace. With the Goldfish Report on October 19th, 2015. I am Radagast, and I am joined by Steve, our European correspondent. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Uh, Sanjay, the wonder from down under. G'day, g'day, g'day. Just channeling Captain Hook again. Sherry Beal and a right to know. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Louisa, our media outreach, and we'll also in, uh, inform a little bit more about our guest. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and thanks, Radagast. We have a very special guest with us today. We have John Otrin. He's an actor and activist who's going to be joining us, and uh, we have. Uh, I will give a little bit more of his uh, background and credits, and once you introduce the ambassador. And of course, the voice of the dragon, the ambassador. Welcome, ambassador. Welcome, everyone. And uh, also welcome to our special guest. We had already a uh, quite long talk before we had this uh, uh, start of this program and getting acquainted and discussing these things. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to hear him present this to the people. And, uh, you know, and I would love to ask Luisa to start, uh, you know, it, and everyone else who's still talking with uh, John and, and learn more about what uh, he has to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Ambassador. Today, we have a show that's just really going to be an eye-opener for everybody, and maybe a little shocking, in fact, because it's really kind of pulling, it's exposing the matrix that we live in and the control system that's on our planet and how we're um, really manipulated into giving silent consent to the control that's on the planet. Um, John Otrin is our guest today, and not only is he an actor, uh, he has, his credits include Friday the 13th, uh, MASH, uh, Little House on the Prairie. He's been doing acting for many, many, many years, and I think what he says is credits that he's most proud of are his activism work that he's done in AIDS and um, the public service announcements that he's been involved in in helping to bring awareness and compassion to the whole AIDS uh, crisis. Uh, but what he is going to be talking with us about today is something that he has really is a seeker of knowledge and in, in some and in, in many times actors are this way where they're really seeking knowledge because they really want to understand something in a much deeper sense and in a much deeper way. And we have a very, very deep subject to talk about today, which we can really only get into um, in an introductory manner because it's very complicated. And uh, so we're going to do our best to try to not overwhelm people because even I'm overwhelmed by it. And I tried a little bit last week to kind of talk about this whole uh, system of um, of uh, being, you know, bonded, uh, you know, by um, by the state and uh, by the government and other controllers. And um, John is going to go into detail about this. And, and just so everyone knows, the ambassador is extremely knowledgeable on this um, area as well. So there's going to be really a lot of information session going on with this um, report today. We're going to have our panelists um, ask questions. Uh, there's just an awful lot of information. So having said that I want to introduce John and thanks for joining us John and I don't know where do we begin with this the, the beginning I guess <laughs> hello how are you um, let, uh, let, let me say something first here uh, I studied with a, a, a very very beautiful man who passed away his name was Corey Allen you might have remembered him from uh, rebel without a cause he was the man that was in the chicken race with uh, James Dean and he went over the cliff. And he would say that actors are truthers and business people are actors. So as, as an actor, I, I'm always seeking and searching for the truth. And so that's where I begin, is looking for the truth. And it's very hard because the truth is really covered. And it's like peeling away an, in, an onion skin. It's hard to find it. You think you've got the truth, and then you peel it away a little bit more, and there's there's more to be peeled away. So, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with admiralty law or equity law? Uh, we seem to be in in admiralty law, and admiralty law is is where 
we're located today, but the truth is, is admiralty law is just an offspring of equity law. And equity is the unwritten law. And admiralty law is the written law. There's the legal law, and then there's the unwritten law. Now, the difference between the two laws are, is that in admiralty law, there's always a winner and a loser. And it's adversarial. It's like one team against another team. Where in equity law, it's there's no one winner. It could be both people could be um, they could be equal. And does that make sense to people? Because does that make any? I mean, I'm so, trying. Yeah. So what you're saying is the law that we have that that in the United States or worldwide that's what we're having the admiralty law at the moment. That's what you're saying. Right. And, and admiralty law is there's a title. And in that title means that you, you, you break it down that um, you become the trustee. And when you become the trustee of something, um, you are responsible for the payment of something that you don't own. Well, example, John, John, can we start with birth certificates? How do okay. we start? Is that a, how did that happen? How did we get started with that? Well, you see, admiralty law is, is like the, the law of the sea, so, so you, you are actually, okay, so if you're in the a law of the sea, where is sea level? So let's start with sea level. Sea level used to be by the Corps of Engineers where sea level is at, at a beach level, but then they changed it. Sea level today is considered the highest point in the United States, in the United States, or the highest point in any country. So that means that you're actually under that jurisdiction. And if you're under that jurisdiction, you're by those rules. Now, if you go back to the sea, what happens if someone goes to sea and they're out to sea for seven years? They become lost at sea. So it's an abandonment. So everything goes back to what is, isn't, and isn't, is. It's, it's very complex. It's not a, an easy thing, but I would love for somebody to ask me some questions. So yeah, so, so what happened was we're actually, with the birth certificate thing, we are actually equity. Is that what it means, that we're well, under this jurisdiction? Right, the birth. Let's, let's look at birth. When a ship births, there's, there's double meanings in, in, in our English language. So if you go into a court, you're going into the birth. You know what I'm saying? You're going, there's, in other words, let's go into a court Court is like like a tennis court. It goes back and forth. You're an admiralty. There's it's it's an interesting thing. So let's let's start with the first thing. In admiralty law, there's capital letters and there's upper and lower case letters. If you ever notice on every tombstone, it's all capital letters. If you also look at your ships, they're on all capital letters. And if you look at your name on any of your uh, let's say your driver's license or any of your credit cards, it's in all capital names. So if you're in all capital names, you can only be one of three things. You're either a corporation. Remember when Romney said people are corporations? You're a corporation, you're a, you're a vessel, or you're a tombstone. So your birth certificate is actually a death certificate. It's a tombstone. And most people aren't aware of that. That's interesting, John. And can you uh, just give us an idea how uh, we are in this matrix, and this is silent consent, and by birth of this, by, by virtue of this certificate, this birth certificate, we have given silent consent. Can you explain how that works? Well, when you're born, you'll notice that a hospital will make you get a birth certificate. There's, there's two parts to that. There's the application for birth, which is signed by the mother and the doctor, and if you want an actually an application of your birth, the only three people that can get it are the doctor, the mother, and the person who's born. But then there's the birth certificate, which is in all capital letters, and that's the death certificate. So it's, it's an interesting facet. Admiralty law is um, it's very complex. And if I can... <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to jump in and um, say the definition of admiralty law because just uh, – but anyway, let me, let me go ahead and do that. I'm sorry. Okay, admiralty law, also called maritime law, is a combination of U.S. 
and international law that covers all contracts, lorts, injuries, or offenses that take place on navig navigable waters. John. Correct. And, and, and if the sea level is the highest point in the United States, let's say, and the sea level is the highest point in Europe, that means that all of the land in Europe and the United States, if they're traveling together, you're in, under that jurisdiction. So what does it mean for somebody who's listening to this? What does it mean for them that they're not realizing the basic cuts well, of the chase? Well, first of all, it means that by being under admiralty law, there, there's, a, there's a whole set of rules. And, and if you understand those rules, then you can actually navigate uh, successfully. But if you don't understand those rules, you, you think things are uh, up against you and then you get angry and, and then you start you know, to, to make waves. For example, a man never has a child He's not uh, the father. He's actually considered the uh, the his child is his offspring, whereas the mother actually gives birth to a child. So in admiralty law, all children are bastards. They're actually the father is actually the the state. They actually own the child. That's so, why. They, yeah. So the state owns, and do they own us as well? That's exactly right. Right. So we're, we're chattels of the state. Right, because if we haven't taken our body back after seven years, they own us. We're, we're abandoned ships. So who owns us, John? Who owns us? The state. And who well, owns the state? Well, that's kind of complex. Uh, some people feel it's the banks that own the state now, or the state owns the banks. Uh, it, it, it varies. It goes back and forth. Yeah, maybe the ambassador can jump in um, also on that because I know he's he, you, you two yeah. gentlemen are quite an expert and it's kind of yeah. hard to wrap our brain around it to understand who owns us. What are we? What are we? Uh, ba ba basically, it is created in a very confusing manner. Okay, so for example, first we have to go to the, uh, the situation that most countries are corporations. Okay, so uh, basically, the corporation can you know make a claim that they own you, and so basically, when we look at that situation, that you know countries are actually corporations, uh, and uh, so you know who owns us? That's the important question. Now, the, the important question is this way: we can take for example, myself. I do not have a birth certificate. Okay, is it because I lost it? No, because I never had a birth certificate. Does it mean that I was never born? Yes, I was born, but I don't have a birth certificate. On the other hand, my son, you know, which is born in another country, do have a birth certificate. Okay? And so the situation here is that when a person receives, when the birth certificate comes in, it's actually a bond. Okay? It's a promise of payment. It's a calculated income for the corporation. The corporation in Singsef goes through their central banks, okay, to other institutions like the Vatican Bank, where this bond will be kept because, you know, the Vatican is the master of the seas. So they are the head of the admiratory law system. So they will be the keepers of your soul. They are the owner of your soul. Maybe Jan can go more deeper into that, uh, how that whole based in. But basically, it, so you are borrowed again. So when you go into prison, you know, you're defaulting on your payments. And that's why you have these years that you have like a, a criminal record and after that it will disappear and so on and so on, depending on what type of crime you're doing. But as, as well, when you go to prison, you will have to work there, okay? So in the system, is all based on slavery. And, uh, you know, a very wise prophet uh, 1,800 years ago almost was making a prophecy that was stating that in these end times, we would see the biggest slavery of the history of mankind, but people would not realize that they are slaves. We are at this position right now. So basically, when you are born, that birth certificate becomes a bond. That bond is used by the central banks in each country to borrow against. Okay, And as you know, these central banks are privately owned corporations. So basically, they will borrow against it. And basically, also, the Vatican is the biggest debt holder on the planet. Okay? And so that's an institution that keeps the debt. Okay? And so in, in reality, in this sense, okay, it's, uh, 
uh, you know, the whole system that we're looking at today, people can say, oh, it's a, all a fraud. No, it's a fr not a fraud because we're living it. We are silently consenting to it every single day. And as long as we're using the US dollar, as long as we are taking US, uh, social security checks, as long as we're taking food stamps, as long as we are you know, doing things, going to the hospital, opening bank accounts, and we cannot act without this number. And again, we go back to the 666 system of Antichrist, where basically <clears throat> you will not be able to do anything as, unless you accept the mark of the beast. And as long as you accept that you are a number, Okay, and without that number, you cannot do commas. You can do nothing, which is written that's supposed to be happening. And that's what's happening right now. So right now, we are staring and living, you know, the, the system that was created by the Antichrist. Now people are going to say that, okay, what do, you know, the ambassador mean with Antichrist? And we talked about that earlier, me and John, that basically Antichrist was an entity that was existing for long fall before Jesus came into place. And if you look at the Torah, you have, uh, you know, the serpent, which Christians think is the devil, but the serpent is the deceiver. Basically, in the Torah, the, the devil and the serpent is not the same entity. It's two different entities. It's in the Bible where it becomes the same entity. But in reality, this entity is the deceiver. You know, he has an Ar Aramaic and Arabic word, which is called Vajal, which means the deceiver, and he has a PhD in deception. And he is the mastermind behind this whole system. It is all... Is, is all created for a world domination, which was prophesied in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, long, long time ago. So what we are doing is that we're having some sick, twisted people around the world that actually is running this beast and basically con controlling it. So that, that's why basically what we are trying to do here is just create an awareness of how actually things are in reality. But like I said, it's a very complicated matter. I mean, me and John probably would we have to sit here and do many goldfish reports in hours to, to try to go the finer details. And in some cases, also, I uh, have to be restricted to what I say because, you know, I, uh, of certain man uh, reasons. But it's very important that, you know, it's important to see what is the fact, okay? And the fact of the matter is that this birth certificate uh, is basically one of the gates, okay, uh, for this fraud, okay? May John can uh, maybe elaborate on what I was talking about. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. One of the things that you said there was the, uh, the trust. The largest trust in the world is the Catherine Trust, which is in the Vatican. And they, hold, they hold the, uh, the birth certificate, which means they hold your pledged soul. And how did that happen? It happened this way. Back in 1917, they passed in the United States an act called Trading with the Enemy. And in 1933, they passed House Resolution 192, which made it illegal to have gold. And at that same time, they passed the Bank of Relief Act, which made everybody enemy of the states. So what happened is, is that since you cannot pay a debt with a debt, they had to find some way to make money work. And the way that they make money work is by pledging everybody's labor. So when you have a birth certificate, they actually pledge into the banks a million dollars. That's what runs the country. So that makes you your, your, your pledged labor. That's why you always hear the politicians talking about jobs, because they need pledged labor in order to make this economy work because they can go out of the system. And that's, that's why they're always talking about jobs. But the best way to get people to work is to take away jobs so they want something that they can't get. Instead of having professions, they want you to be working. And it's the demise the of the middle class that way. So if I understand you correctly, John, you, the debt, you can't pay it with more debt, which the U.S. dollar is debt anyway. So you can either pay it in your work or gold. The right. Two. And, and so there is, so you cannot pay, you can only, so every time you, like, for example, if you look at a dollar bill, you'll see that on a dollar bill, there's a little crest that says Bank of. But if you look at others, it says Federal Reserve System. And they're actually, uh, a $20 bill is actually one twentieth of a dollar. A hundred dollar bill is actually one one hundredth of a dollar. Why is that? Well, what is isn't and isn't is. It's 
a lot of what we look at is the deception. It's like, if you take, let's, let me give you an example of what the ambassador is talking about, why people are so unaware. If you take a, 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 a dish with cold water and you put a frog in it and you turn the heat up very, very slowly, the frog will cook. But if you take, a, if you take some hot water and throw a frog in it, it'll jump out. People don't even realize what's happening to them. They're unaware. And that's, that's really what the Goldfish Report is about, is to make people aware of what's really going on. Yeah, we really but are John, the frogs in the cooker. Oh, I'm sorry, Sanjay. We really are the frogs in the cooker, aren't we? <laughs> no, we are, because we're not even aware what's going on. We are. Go right. ahead, Sanjay. Yes, so, sir. John, basically, uh, from what I understand, this is very deep, because from the minute we're born, Without even understanding, we get given a number, a invoice number, and um, you know, and put into debt slavery as bonded labour. And um, as you said just then, the analogy of the pen. So that's when we're in the cold water when we're born, right? Like it's almost like a water birth. Right. And then uh, over time, they slowly through education and everything else heat up the water where they're customing us, like you know, making us a slave, conditioned. And acceptance. But, but it all is also based on what he said, the Quran and every, everything is prepaid because you can't be in debt without being prepaid. Now, we didn't even discuss this part. There's a thing called accepted for value. When you accept it, there, technically everything that is made is already prepaid for because in the, it says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be saved for your sins. Well, that same process is in our commerce. And that means everything is prepaid. It, it, it's a very complex system that it takes a lot to really listen to and study. It's not I, understand, I understand now, as the ambassador says, the word jal. Jal is like a net. And the, in Hinduism, there's another word called maya, right? It's all about this materialistic world where there's no end to desire. Exactly. It almost feels the same. It's so deep that you... Yeah, you can never find the end of it. Like, I mean, you can't pay debt with debt, but this is why they're getting us to create credit cards upon credit cards upon credit cards, and we're using credit, which is debt, to well, pay our bills. Notice this. You People, like, for example, I'll give an example of something that occurred. Uh, GMAC mortgage went bankrupt. They had to send everybody that got a loan what's called a B-10 form. That B-10 form is... If you file a B-10 form, uh, that means that you're the creditor. That means you're the creditor. So when you signed an application for a loan on a house, it's your signature that created the money because the banks are actually fictions. They, there's no real person there. So your, your signature actually creates the money. Your pledge labor creates the money. Have you ever gone to a shopping center and you see someone there collecting applications for credit cards? They have yes. applications on Wall Street. Right. It's called securitization and a forensic audits. It, it's very complex. John, can, can you explain I, to I, us, or maybe the ambassador, what this yeah, training I want, is? Yeah, I want to say something here very important, is that that's why it's so hilarious when you see people talking about communism. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because like communism is such a great evil and ba 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 ba, and the problem is this way is that if you look at yourself in the mirror, and then you ask yourself that what is communism, what is this what we are doing, the slavery that we are, the tyranny that we are under, it's 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 like the the same evil. Okay. It's nothing that is better. It's nothing that is less. The, it's like I used to say many times, like the, uh, the philosophy of communism is a very good idea. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with people. Okay? Why? Because in the communist world, everyone's supposed to be equal, and then some people were not equal, and people wanted not to be equal, and then people start inspiring things. So the best way to keep people uh, slaves is by keeping them dumb, not knowing what's going on, making them feel that they are free, making them feel that they have a democracy, making them feel that they have an opinion, and in reality, it's just an illusion. And, and this is why I'm stated many times that we are living in an illusion of democracy, 
we're living in an illusion of being free. In reality, we are not. And at the same time, it's like even, you know, when you are put in a concentration camp or in isolation or something like that, they can, like, capture your body, but your mind is always free. It's like I usually say, the dream world, when you're dreaming during night times, is very exciting, especially for me. I'm a person that has a lot of dreams. And, you know, I'm feeling more free in the dream world than I feel in the normal world on the, you know, here on the planet. It's just that certain things in the dream world you can't experience that you can do in, in this world that we are here. But I think this is very important to realize what we're trying to teach now with this lesson in this first interview. I think we should do more interviews with, uh, with Jan because he has a great, uh, you know, sea of knowledge here. But it, it, it's the understanding of the system. I mean, the system is very simple in reality. We are being born. When we are born, we have a birth certificate. That birth certificate is sent uh, to, through our central banks to the banking institution at the uh, Vatican Bank. They will borrow money from some entity. Okay? That particular entity is actually the one that owns everything. And when we talked earlier, we talked about that basically, basically the Bible or the Torah uh, and uh, so was of the Quran, because it's also recognized as three scripture, uh, two scriptures, uh, is basically based, the admiratory law of the system is based on that concept. And so basically what is happening here is that you're having a divine law that is twisted against us. Okay. And so what, what, what is clear in this whole thing is that is this look and opinion about debt, okay? If you have a debt, you cannot come to heaven. If you have a debt, okay, you, you, you will have to be cleansed. If you have a debt, okay, so basically you are slave to the person that you owe the money to. This is all from these three scriptures. Okay, so basically this is the fundament for the world control of the whole situation. And maybe, Jan, you could, uh, uh, you know, explain a little bit more about this free trustership and how it works. Yes, okay. There's one thing that, there's some good news on this, though. And the good news is that there's a word called notice. But people don't look at that word. Notice, N-O-T-I-C-E. They have to give you notice, and most people ignore the notice. I would be willing to bet that if you look in your living room and you take the cushions up, you'll see, um, they'll tell you what the cushions and the couch is made out of, and you'll see the biggest word there will be notice, but people ignore it. It's right in front of us. A police officer, when they stop you, they don't just give you a ticket. They give you grace. They give you an opportunity. They give you notice. They say, do you know how fast you are traveling? They allow you to actually say something. See, everything is based on equity, equity law. Even admiralty law is part of equity. And if you really look at it, what we, what we do is we, we don't even see what's in front of us. And that's the first thing. So I think the best news is, is that if nothing else that we take away from this, this session today of the Goldfish Report is to start looking around at what we pick up, and there's the word notice. When you go to a restaurant and you take ketchup and you put it on your, on your uh, french fries or whatever, notice what the ketchup is made out of. When you look outside and you see a sign that says notice, Start looking around and start realizing the world around you because that's where we go that that's where we start going brain dead. We're not really looking at the world in, in a very positive way. We just take it for granted. We and that's the first element is the word notice. It's the most powerful thing that they have. When there's foreclosures on houses, they give you notice. When the IRS comes after you, they give you notice. Most people just ignore it. They say, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. And when you get something in the mail, you don't complete it. The second part of that is that you don't perfect the notice. In other words, if you ever notice when they give you a Social Security card, 
They don't have you sign for it. You've accepted the contract. You've accepted whatever. The bank will say, we're going to up your interest rates. You don't object. You don't listen to them. You just take it for granted. Now, I want to go a little bit into equity. Equity law. It's yes, like just give me a second. I just, I just give me a second. I just wanted to state one thing. This is very important. Because also, as you notice, we're talking about notice here. <laughs> is that Satan, okay, cannot make you sin. He can tempt you, but you're the one committing it. So basically, in reality, okay, this is the same basic system. You know, you're, you're basically silently consenting or consenting with it mm -hmm. by not paying attention. Mm. Well, that's like saying hiding in plain sight. So we're not seeing it. We don't see it, though. It's hard to see, isn't it? Just no, 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 no. Not only that, it's based on ignorance. That's why we're waging a war on ignorance, and that's why yes. we have this program that's to right. start with. So, but uh, please continue, John. No, so but it's just, just, this is exactly, the ambassador's right on. They even give you notice in movies. They'll tell you in the movies what's going to happen. They, they look at right now in, in California, you see notice tsunami warnings. They give you the notice. How many people ignore it? Does, it, does that give them permission to do it? Then, when they give you notice, that gives them permission. That gives, because you've accepted their you, you've accepted their contract through your silence. And your silence is notice. I mean, is is acquisition? Is, is it them permission to do what they want to do? And I, I think said, part John, of this is quantum oh. physics. They want our our thoughts to go out in the direction that they want because they know how powerful quantum thoughts are. Thoughts exactly. become things. That's become things. I want to see if Radagast wants to jump in here. Brother Radagast has so much. He knows a lot about this, too. He's been so quiet sitting there. But I want to see if Radagast has a question or a comment or something he'd like to make on this subject. Because I know you know about this, brother. Yeah, no, I just I want to keep the flow going. The ambassador and John are doing such a good job. And, you know, other people are asking questions. It's staying on track. I just am I'm delighted to be a part of this. Okay, let me break something down here, what's called trust law. And everything is based on trust law. And this is really important. If I want to give you, I want to grant to you my ownership of the Brooklyn Bridge, I can actually give you a quick deed that grants you. But how much of the Brooklyn Bridge do I own? Zero. So you can't grant anything until you become the grantee. And in trust law, they don't even teach you this. But there are four parts to every trust, and everything that we have in this country and in the world today is based on trust law. There's called the grantee, the grantor, and then in, in, in real estate, it's the grantor settler, and then it's the beneficiary, and it's the trustee. A trustee is somebody that has something that they own that, well, let, let me say it this way. A trustee is some is somebody that has something in their possession that they do not own that they have to pay for. So if you get a speeding ticket, you become the trustee of that speeding ticket. You have something in your possession that you have to pay for that you don't own. So the highest form of ownership is to be the beneficiary. So when you have the beneficiary rights of something, you have the ownership of that. Now, most people aren't aware of that. So, um, like for example, on foreclosures, it's always a trust. It's a deed of trust. But the trustee that forecloses doesn't have absolute right. They have limited rights. Do you follow what I'm saying? Does this make sense? So everything, like when the, when, when the ambassador's talking about the system of money or the birth certificate, it becomes a trust, and the state owns that trust, but we become the trustee, so we have to pay for it. And so when you, so it's, it's a very complex system of trust law. John, one question either for you or for the ambassador. Um, this, people are under the illusion, I guess, that we, we live within countries' geographical borders. Is this an overarching system that covers the entire globe, or is it just you sitting in the United States? No, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. A, a, good, a good movie that really goes into this that has a lot of symbolism is called The Wizard of Oz. 
if you really look at the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard of Oz is actually talking about all this. And most people aren't even aware that, because remember in the Wizard of Oz, we have the power. In other words, the reason that Rome has this power is because we've abandoned it. Rome can, the Pope has no power over what we don't abandon. But they have to give us notice. And once they give us notice and we abandon, then we have no power. Quantum, what do you mean we don't abandon? What do you mean by abandon? Well, abandon means you don't perfect. In other words, you don't, you, in other words, okay, the next time you look at uh, a bill that's sent to you, it's not really called a bill. They'll never say it's a bill. They'll say it's a statement. And on that statement, there'll be some numbers. That numbers are, are actually trust numbers. So you have to accept those trust numbers and put it into your own trust and send it back to them. In other words, when you accept um, any kind of letter in the mail, you're accepting that contract. The contract is actually the envelope, not what's inside of it. It's the terms of the contract that are inside. The actual envelope is the contract. It's all contract law. It's all, it, it, it's, it's, very, um, it's very complex. Right. And I, I don't want to confuse a lot of people, but I would say the most important thing that you want to gain out of this conversation is you want to start being aware of notice. You want to start looking at what comes to you, what you pick up, when you go to the grocery store and you buy something, notice what's on the labels, notice what you're actually, when you're on the street, notice what's in front of you. Notice, it's, it's, it's powerful. That's important, John, that you're just waking us up. The goldfish, we're all waking up. We're, all, we're never going to go walking anywhere the same anymore after this conversation today. And I hope everybody who listens will be the same way and they'll pass this along to everybody that they know. But I know Radagast right now has a question. We have a few questions from our panelists. So let's go around. Go ahead, Radagast. Hello, John. Um, when you mentioned that the envelope was the contract, to, I tie that back into something you said that is a very subtle and, and not often part of the conversation is the postmaster general. And it's the postmark on the, isn't it the postmark on the envelope that makes it, uh, that gives it its official stamp or what makes it what it is? I mean, doesn't, that, doesn't the post office play a role in this? Well, the post, well, first of all, the postmaster general is the third trustee of the United States. It's a very powerful position it, it, because the postmark is, is, it, it is very powerful. There are people that on their paperwork, they'll use a three cent stamp. There's a whole process that they, in fact, a Benjamin Franklin was offered the presidency, but instead of the presidency, he wanted to be the postmaster general of the United States because he knew that the post office is one of the most powerful positions that you can have. Uh, if you look at uh, tax on, on uh, your house, a stamp, the Stamp Act, notice the new stamps, they're forever, because there's no, there's no um, marking of how much they're worth. In fact, if you look at a dollar stamp, you'll see one line go through it as opposed to two lines, which is actually a U. The one line means that that one dollar stamp is easily really saying it's one peso because one line through the S mark is a peso, two lines is a dollar. And when you, if you notice the contract on a mortgage, they'll say it in dollars, but then they'll actually ask you for money in pesos. I mean, there's, it's very complex. The three trustees of the United States are the uh, Vatican, the uh, monarch of England and the postmaster general. That goes into um, the United States when it was formed. The most powerful p position, what makes America the freest country at one point was the Declaration of Independence, which is actually a trust. It's a living trust that guarantees freedom for everyone. It's a very powerful, a very, very, but it's not seen in a court of law of equity. It's only seen in the unwritten law of equity, and it, it, that's another whole 
conversation I'd have to get into. We will get into that. That's a very, and that's, the other part. Oh, go know, ahead. Right again. The other question I had attached to this was about if how do we bec- how do we become the beneficiaries of these trusts that um or like if we're a trustee, how do we become the beneficiary? Well. Let, let, let me put it this way. A grantor settler can also be a beneficiary. A trust, you have to collapse the trust in other words to become the grantee. Um, there's, there, it's, it's a very complex thing. Um, it's, it's an awareness. It's an awareness that it, it's, not, it's not a simple thing. There, there are people that I've studied with that I think um, um, Louise is going to you know, post in the information below that, that I've studied with for years, uh, different people that uh, they always preface it by saying this is for educational purposes because this is not for legal. Everything that I'm saying is for educational purposes because if I said I, I, I'm not practicing law, I'm just a, a student of history, I'm a student of this, um, it, it's, it's something that, you know, you have to ingest and be responsible for yourself. It's something I can't do for you. It's, I'll give you a good example. A man on his dying, his dying, uh, say, say you know somebody and they're passing away. You cannot uh, accept them for their, you know, for their sins. They have to accept themselves. This is something that we have to do ourselves. So it has to become something that we learn, internalize, and then do for ourselves. This is something I can't do for you. And I know that, that you know that you're just, you know, playing devil's advocate here. Um, but it, it takes a process of learning. It's, it's, it's an educational process that you have to really know that you're right. And also one important thing to state is that, you know, no other man can forgive another man's sin. Exactly. Uh, but he can forgive another man's debt. Right. That means basically, if you owe me money, I can forgive you debt, but I cannot forgive your sin. Mm-hmm. And this is a very, very important thing. So yes. all these trustees, as you talk about, are just trustees. They are not the actual owners of distrusts of a debt. That's a complete different entity, you know. And the only ones that actually could forgive is them. Very well put. It's it's uh, this is something that I think the ambassador is starting just to awake people to start realizing that they have to look around and see what's there and not live uh, without really looking and seeing what's around them because it, this is a thing that you have to do personally with inside yourself and you have to start understanding that you have to read and 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 really look into it and you know. Um, Louise, you're gonna you're gonna actually post some of the places that I've studied with, correct? Right at the end of uh, when we when I post the report, it's going to be uh, in in the description section below. And I just wanted to um, go to Sanjay. I know Sanjay had a question for you. Mm. I just want to say one thing, oh, which awesome. is important here also to mention, because uh, you know we are talking about you know the family things, and we're talking about trustees, and people are talking about elders, and all these type of different things. And I stated many times that I have noticed that majority of the people claiming to be involved in this world, including people like Neil Keenan and many others, doesn't know the difference between an elder and a keeper. Okay? And a keeper is a trustee, and a trustee is not an owner. And so when you have a people like Swiss Indians of the world, even if he would be a keeper, it means basically he has no right okay, to touch this money or do anything with it because he's not the owner of this money. And all the money goes to one source, okay? So that's a very, very important thing to just pay attention to uh, for the people that's following this, uh, you know, the, the stories with the different form of people that claims to be engaged with elders and keepers and so on and so on. And even the elders have a master, okay? So that's very, very important to put attention to. Okay. Yes, and I think the end of that line is the um, Chinese dragon family. Um, but. I uh, go ahead, Sanjay. You had your hand up. Yep. So, John, oh, John's gone away. <laughs> no, I, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Um, so yeah, just just the 
whole Wizard of Oz. I almost feel like the Tin Man, not Dorothy following the yellow brick road. Um, this thing that you just said, and that's made me notice the word notice. So when we get given a notice, um, do we, do we have a set time that we have to respond to? Because I mean, this in Australia, it's a big thing. And, uh, I know we talked about this before. Um, there's a sovereign nation within Australia, which a lot of people don't know about. And what he did was he declared war on Australia. And there was a notice, obviously. Now I see this word notice. Um, and the Australian government didn't do anything at, about it at the time. So then he got to be a sovereign nation. So you're saying that when we get any bill and we open the envelope, we accepted the contract. But then inside is the contact of the uh, contract. So we need to notice that and what rights or what do we have, what time do we have or what actions can we take to say, well, we don't agree with it or stuff like that. Like, I mean, we don't want to just accept the increase in interest rate or increase in credit card rates or all these things. What choices do we have that we can actually, well, disagree, I guess. I mean, at the moment we don't know is agreeing without knowing. So the okay. question I've got is, let, let me answer that because it's a very, very good question. And in Admiralty, you have a time limit. In Admiralty, you have a time limit. And if you don't do it in Admiralty within a certain time limit, you give up those rights. But in equity law, there is no time limit because equity law is totally different. Equity law is equitable. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of an equity law as, of, as to, in, in the Bible, there's the, the uh, woman who is the adulteress. And the reason that she isn't stoned is because in equity, you have to actually have a real party of interest that has to come and confront the person. But when there's a bank loan, there is no real party of interest because remember what we just said about, about bank loans. And we said that it's a debt and you can't pay a debt with the debt. So the banks haven't lost any money because when they took them off the gold standard, it went into a debt. So the reason the woman was never stoned in equity law is because the real party of interest was the husband and he never came forward. So there has to be a real party of interest and there has to be something that actually occurred and that person actually has to say that they had a loss. So the woman went free. So in equity law, there is no time limit. There are different rules for equity than there are for, for commerce. I'll give another example. A man passes away and he has two sons. One works on the farm and another one's in the city going to school. In equity law, the man on the farm, the judge would say, you get the farm to the man that's on the farm and the man that's in school, the man who got the farm would have to pay the debt for the person who was at school. So it would be shared equally. If a husband and wife have uh, closure the, in commerce, they both have to suffer. But in equity, it's different. And equity law is the unwritten law. If you want to study that, there's a, a great... Um, um, man that actually wrote, it's called Gibson. Gibson wrote, it, it's, it's, it, it, there is no statutes, there are no codes in equity law, there, because statutes and codes haven't been, um, they're just not there, it's just case law. It, it's, it's totally different. And um, so, but it's a good question. So basically what going on to what Redegas asked, because that was my second question, was so, we get driven by lawyers and accountants to set up trusts, for example, family trusts and stuff like that, and become trustees, right? But after today, I will be noticing the word trustee is totally different because you become a tin man, not Dorothy following the yellow brick road. Right. It's very important to be the beneficiary, right? Not the trustee. And people think, oh, I've set up a trust. I'm a trustee. I'm a big person. No. You want to be the humble person who's the beneficiary. Well, if you notice in The Wizard of Oz, she always had the right to go home. 
Yes. She just never executed it until the very, she always had the right to go home. She, she was the one who was living in the fictional world. She was living in the matrix. Power. So, so we do have the power to call Palais and not walk the plank and say, take me to the captain. Yeah, you do. It's just that the, the most important element, and the ambassador has really been talking about it, is knowledge and wake up. Wake up. You have, you have, to, you have to stop just doing the, uh, you have to look around. You have to be proactive. You have to know that, you, you know, giving is the same as receiving. And most people aren't aware. It's a whole different way of looking at life. Okay, we have another question. We have Sherry uh, from our panel who uh, has a question. Go ahead, Sherry. Yes, Sherry. You're muted, Sherry. Sherry. Sorry, guys, I was okay. taking a second to unmute. Apologies. Um, so, yeah, I would just like to uh, make a quick comment and then sort of um, um, just, just give a, sort of my closing. But, um, and here's, here's my comment, and, and John, um, correct me on this. Um, I've studied a bit about it. You've studied a lot more about it. Um, from my understanding, there is a pot of, we'll just call it a pot of money that's in each person's name, each person that has a social security card or number in the U.S. who has a birth certificate, there exists a pot of money that is probably way more than I could ever guess on my back that I'm not aware of, but there is a way, and we're not going to go into it today, but there is a way for me to take my, um, what are we calling them, notices? We're calling them uh, coupons, um, you know, bills, and, and submit them in a certain way to a certain place uh, and have them paid for. But I'm just going to stick with, briefly, there is a pot of money on all of our backs that we can, we can dig into if we p become aware of how to do this. Is that, is that correct, John? Uh, yes, there is. Oh, but, Winston Stroud. But there is, but it's it's, but it isn't the way people think it is. L let me explain. Um, it's not real. It's fictional, and you can't take it out. In other words, this is it's a very complex sy system, and I think the Ambassador hit upon it. The United States is a corporation. All corporations are connected. So let's say. Okay, they, they call it secure, they securitize the money on the private side. So in other words, if you get a loan for a house, say for 450000 they need to use that money to run the government. And they, they actually, out of that securitization, will make about $92 million out of $450,000 loan. But you can't take that money out because it's actually debt money. It's, it's fictional money. You may be able to have uh, your bills sent to them, but you won't. It's not cash. In other words, your dollar bill. If you look at your dollar bill, it's got two numbers on it. It's a number on it. That's a trust number. That's actually a bond trust number. And bonds are not really money. They're 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 actually uh, they're there to make the world a better place. It's just that it's been abused by certain people. And I think what the ambassador is talking about is not to use that abuse anymore, but to actually get it to be there to actually run the government in a more educated, profitable way for everybody to have a better quality of life. Yeah. It, okay. that, you, you, that money, if you took out a dollar of that money, you would go to jail. In other words, that money is there to pay a debt but not to actually, there's two kinds of money. There's money so of change. People have been successful submitting bills to this, and we're not going to go into it today and having those bills paid. You have? No, I'm saying people have. Certain people have, but you got to be very careful on that because you have to have a certain status, and you have to be able to understand exactly how that works. And, and it's, it's not an easy set, uh, system of doing it, and it's okay. not real money. It's, it's, it's money that's created to run. Uh, okay, give me a perfect example. When you fly into Los Angeles or any city, you see all the lights that are going on, all the hospitals and everything that's going on. 
that money is used to run so that everybody has a better quality of life. And it has to be done in a proper way. It's not, it's not like people think, oh, I can take that money out because it's not real. It's, there's money of account and there's money of exchange. Money of, ex a perfect example, let's say you go to church and you want to tie 10% to the church, but you don't have money, you have a garden. So you take a basket, 10% of your fruit, 10% of your vegetables. That's money of exchange. But money of account is actually debt money. It's totally different. Okay, so we, we won't get, uh, that's something you tread very lightly. You've got to know what you're doing. And I just want to give some closing remarks just to share um, with our Goldfish uh, Report audience. And, you know, it's like we are in this matrix of debt slavery, which we're talking about, but we are discussing things so that we can all wake up as to what's really happening because before we change anything, we have to wake up to what's going on uh, in this matrix. And, you know, it, it's all the monetary system, uh, which is creating this debt slavery, and we don't have to live this way. Um, I'm really looking for a future that works its way into no monetary system at all so that we can all wake up in the morning feeling enlightened, feeling happy, doing what we love to do and doing what our passion and our talents are. So um, I just had to add that. Thanks, yeah. Sherry. And is this really, I think what Sherry's talking about here is that the back end trust, is that what it's referred to as the master file uh, trust? John, have you heard those terms? Well, there's, there's what, if you, if you take, when you get a, a, what you think is a bill, it's actually a statement. And you'll notice that on every statement, there's always going to be a blank page. That's the private side accounting. In other words, it's what's called double bookkeeping system. In other words, every debt that you think is a debt on a credit card or anything to call capital is actually really paid for already. But they're only sending you half of the statement. And it, it's a whole nother training and, and, and studying, and it's very complex. And um, I mean, if you're a buff of history, um, like I say, at the end of this, there's a couple of people that I've studied with. Um, it, it's, it's, it takes a lot of energy. It's a lot of fun if you're into history because you're going to connect the dots. In other words, the dots that you, what is, isn't, and isn't is. It's like I said, there wasn't a civil war in the United States. There was a war between the federal government and all the states, and they inscripted the North to fight their battle. And out of that came property tax. And then out of the uh, crash of 29, it became income tax. Prior to that, only corporations were paying income tax. So there's the, the some people believe that the Constitution is a Chapter 11 reorganizational bankruptcy. And, you know, you have to go and read about this to understand exactly how you feel about it. And um, it's all educational. John, does this have anything to do with being an enemy belligerent? Do you know that term? Can you explain yeah. that to us? Okay. Well, in 1917, uh, Rose, let's see, it was Wilson who passed Trading with the Enemy Act. And the reason they did that was because there were a lot of people from different countries that um, they didn't want to, you know, it was called Trading with the Enemy Act. So everybody outside of the United States that would trade something would be considered trading with the enemy. In 1933, they passed the Banking Relief Act, which made everybody enemies of the state. Now, there's a thing in commerce that, and it's also in nature, where you see poison ivy within five feet, you'll see the antidote. Within those acts are the relief of it also. But in order to get the relief, you have to look at what's in there. In other words, you want to authenticate and have ownership so that you're not a trading with the enemy. But, but everybody is considered enemies of the state. Also, everything that's done by executive order by the president is totally legal. They don't do anything illegal. Most people get angry because they don't understand the law. They're doing everything legal. Everything that Bush did, everything that Obama did, they do everything under the law. They don't break the law. 
John, how do, so well. how do they get away with this? They don't really expect us to know this, do they? Yes, they do. Oh, they, they, t- they do. It's part of the law. Equity has certain laws that equity requires you to know all this. There, in fact, one of the things that's very harsh in equity law is that equity has no excuse for people being poor. Equity is very fair, but equity has no excuse for things. And, but equity is, it's, yes, you are expected to know this. And notice, like I say, is probably the most important thing. And studying, and, you know, maybe not that I want you to turn off TV because I'm an actor, but (laughs) turning off the TV and reading a book, spending some time with the family, doing some community service, understanding the people around you. This is, I mean, how many people go and get on the freeway and never really talk to anybody? How many people get on a train and look at their iPad but never talk to the person next to them? I mean, you know, we become sheep, really. Maybe goldfish is another way of saying it. But to me, That's it's, right. That's the goldfish report. It's, you're on the goldfish report, John. That's what we're doing here. United <laughs> States of sheeple. That's where we are. <laughs> well, <laughs> John. The scary um, stuff, though. I'd like to really hear different what, the, stuff. Yeah. what the ambassador has to say about, you know, have, do we have any hope for getting out of this debt slavery system? You know, right. maybe the ambassador can give us an update or some hope in that area. Yeah, really, well, what do we do with all this knowledge once we have it? Well, I think we have to, I think we have to be aware that we are that frog in that water and slow you see privilege and rights are two different things privilege is a privilege that doesn't mean that you have a right you have to realize that you in order to have a right you have to be like you know like like the ambassador said you have to repent you have to look i had to look at myself and say that i was brainwashed i had to look at myself I couldn't say it was the other person's fault. It was my fault. I have to be aware. And most people want to blame the other person. They want to be taken care of. They don't want to chop their own wood. They don't want, they want somebody to take care of them. They really do. And that's, that's really what we've become. We've become lazy. We have become lazy. Right. Did the ambassador, I think we're getting, this is such a really a huge subject to talk about. We're really scratching the surface, but it's really even scratching the surface. This is really complicated stuff. And um, it really does require, you know, a scholar to understand it. Um, even though we are expected to know it, somehow they created that rule. And, you know, it's really, in my opinion, it's quite unreasonable. <laughs> and, you know, it's not informed consent. Uh, that's the difference. And I think um, it is about informed consent. And I think what we're doing is just that. We're trying to inform people um, so that they don't continue to give their consent. Ultimately, what can we do about this? And I think if enough people understand how it works, we can, um, you know, do what our, con- at least in the United States, what the Constitution was meant to do, uh, and that is uh, g- giving us these these rights to um, wage war against t- the tyranny. Um, so I'd like to hear what the ambassador, you know, before we start our closing comments, what the ambassador might want to comment on up to this point. Yeah. No, I just want to take, for example, now we have these thousands of people streaming into Europe. And these thousands of people is an exchanges of soul into the system. So basically all of them will receive a number, they will receive a slave work system for them to be a part of Europe or America. And that's basically what we're seeing here. We're seeing thousands of new slaves coming into Europe that will be uh, bonded against and borrowed against by the institutions. And in reality, they will all belong to the same master that controls everything else. Okay, And that's, that's the reality. That's why you don't see any uh, politicians screaming too high and loud about it. They know actually that this is a benefit for the country. Okay. So more slaves are coming. Amen. True. So, right. so John, just a question when you talked about equity before. So the term in when they teach you in finance, it's fair and equitable. And even in law, they say that it's fair and equitable. It's they're talking about this equity law kind of thing is where, you have the just right 
but the um, the well, it's, the whole thing is on you. You have to find out, and you have to be knowledgeable. You have to know that to fight that. Well, you see that that's that's what I'm really referring to is that the Declaration of Independence is a bill in chancery, and a bill in chancery. You see, what happened was this it goes back to the time when there was the um, oh, let me say when in England they went into um, the Middle East and the people would come back like the Knights and they were gone for over seven years and they lost their property. So the king made what was called a chancery judge. And that was to be fair and equitable because you see there was an abandonment of their property, but they wanted to have something that was fair and equitable. And it's called chancery law. And chancery is an unwritten law, but it's the law that, that is actually the law that supersedes all of admiralty law. Gibson is a, uh, a judge from Tennessee, and Gibson's work actually goes into the uh, maximums of equity. Some of the maximum equity most people aren't even aware of. They are like, equity sees what is done ought to be done. Equity will not suffer a wrong without a remedy. Equity delights in equality. One who seeks equity must do equity. In other words, if I want equity from you, I must be able to do equity. The equity is the vigilant, not the ones that slumber on their rights. Equity impedes an intent to fulfill an obligation. Equity acts in persona. A corporation can't act in persona. That's why they're an admiralty. Persona means face to face. Equity acts. Equity bores a forfeit. Equity does not require idle gesture. He who comes in equity must come with clean hands. Equity will not support somebody that does something that's not clean. You can't, you can't go and do something that's not clean. Equity delights to do justice, not just by halves. Equity will not take jurisdiction to avoid a multitude. Let, let's say you have a multitude of suits. Equity will supersede those suits. And equity follows the law. Equity will not aid a volunteer. This is really important. This is what makes admiralty law. A volunteer means somebody who does not complete what they're supposed to complete. In other words, I'll do it tomorrow. Equity doesn't aid that person. Where equities are equal, the law will prevail. Between equity equals the first in order, time shall prevail. Equity will not complete an imperfect gift. There's, there's, there's laws in equity that are there for all of us. Equity will not allow a statue to be used to cloak a fraud. If you go, like, say, for in front of a judge and he says, well, you didn't do this within a certain period of time. That's what you were asking before. That's fraud. Yeah. Equity will not allow that to happen. So, John, while I was listening to you before, what, what occurred to me was we have to scrap this system completely. Now, when I'm listening to you, I'm thinking the, the law of equity is equitable to everybody only when you understand it. So if you understand yes. it, then you can use yeah. it to your So it's only the ignorance of the people that, that puts them at a disadvantage within this system. Right. And inequity will not fail for the want of a trustee. That's why they can, they can send you something in the mail and if you don't respond, you can become the trustee. And equity, this is the most important one. Equity regards the beneficiary as the true owner. In other words, when they foreclose on a house, they don't foreclose on your house because you didn't make a payment. Technically, they foreclose on you because you abandon your property. But if you're the equity, if you're the beneficiary of it, you are actually the true owner, but you give up that right. And most people aren't even aware of that. John, are you talking about land trusts? Well, I am. Not to get into it too much, but I mean, is that the same thing or no? It's part of it. It's like when you go in front of a judge, you notice that a judge 
puts on a black robe because if if you you know this is very interesting most people don't even realize this you go to an airport they ask you for your id right how many times when you've gone to into a courtroom have they asked you when you come into the courtroom to see your id no you know why because when they get in front of the judge the judge will say this give me your name he didn't say tell me your name he said give me your name now he owns your name now he owns you you have just given him your rights <laughs> so john this is i fully understand now what after what you just said with this equity thing that understanding the ambassadors uh, the word war on ignorance or changes it to mission on um, ignorance, right? Because we're on a mission now is purely to empower us, right? If we understand the equity law, it is fair and equitable and it applies to everything. And this is what the ambassador is basically trying to do with us and the humanity is basically empower us. So we do understand and have the knowledge because if we have the knowledge, there is a fair law. But if you don't have the knowledge, so if you're one of the goldfishes or ignorant people, um, and again, you talk about the Bible, it's so hilarious. And I find it really funny that we talk about the goat as the devil, but that they talk about the shepherd and the sheep. So they want us to be the sheep. They want us to be nations of sheep so they can shepherd us around instead of be the goats that will jump up and question or kick back. Exactly. And basically what you're really saying is, is that what people are looking for is a free handout. And what people aren't really wanting to do is to do it themselves. Exactly. Have you ever and this is a, a bank will always loan you money if you have money. Mm. But if you're poor, they won't give you the money. Because and then this is exactly what the governments are doing with us. And this is what the master keeps saying. Um, and people are like so interested in food stamps and what handouts am I going to get, right? They have trained the majority. In, with the handouts and stuff like that, it's like, oh, my social security check, my pension check, my this check. I mean, the government's give, give, give. But Excuse it's actually me, really. I have to stick uh, up for the masses of we the people. I, I agree somewhat, but I think that people really, um, if they were empowered, if they felt free, if they didn't have to be stressed out all the time about getting food for their children, um, that they wouldn't have their hand out so much because it's kind of disgraceful. I think they want to have grace. I think they want to have a, a job that they enjoy doing or a purpose in life, you know? So I, I just think that's a sort of product of what's been created. And you yeah, know, but this is, Sherry, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that the governments have done it so well, right, that, that we started we started in a when we were born we started in this cool water and they've slowly heated it up without us even realizing they've put us in this position right exactly that's and right sanjay and i said you know many times on the goldfish report that this is all by design and quite honestly we could continue this conversation for hours and unfortunately we are at the end of our report today and i'd like to ask anybody if they have any closing comments to go right around i think we're all kind of left spellbound here a little maybe more dumbfounded is more like it and i think we just need to really process this information because it is it's 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 complicated it's convoluted it's by design this way so that it um it throws us off and we don't figure out what they're doing but we on the goldfish report here have a war on ignorance and you know what um sanjay's got his pirate hat on and i've got my my riding boots on and i'm the cowboy today and out you know, because we are we're going to win this war on ignorance. <laughs> Get your samurai swords out. We, this is it right here. Don't change this channel because this is where you're going to get the information. And I'm going to ask if anybody has any closing comments. I have some announcements. I do. Go ahead, Raddy Guest. Well, I just, I really like the way uh, uh, John laid out the equity law because my own take on law is that law should be a living law. A common law should be the law that is, that is written in our hearts by the creator. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. Um, and it has to do also with agreements between us as social creatures. And so if we do not if we do not stay up on what all our agreements are, if we're not aware of what equity is, 
we're abdicating our, our right to be in the dialogue of what, what I would call the equity law is, the law of the people. If you don't know the law, you can't contribute to the conversation. And, and therefore, you, we get stuck with every, we're going back to written law. Because nobody knows. They go, oh, let's go to the book. And, you know, and the people who write the books put the laws in there. So equity law, common law, human law has to be something that we all participate in and stay in the conversation. It can't, and if we leave it to others to, to do that for us, well, they'll do it for us. And the chances are we won't like the results. So that's that ultimate responsibility to be involved at every level of this. Thanks, Radagast. Does anyone else have any closing comments? We also... Anybody? The ambassador. Did you have any yeah. closing comments, ambassador? Uh, yes, I have, but let the others speak first. I don't have a, cl a closing comment. I just hope that uh, the ambassador, if you could please include in your closing comment, do we have some hope here of uh, humanity for getting out of this debt slavery system? Yes, I do have, because, uh, you know, this is the time of the Jubilee, and the Jubilee is where you set the slaves free. And the only one that can set the people free is basically the owners of the money. They can, like I stated before, they can state that you don't owe any more or you, you know, you're forgiven your debt or, you know, you have to pay it. So basically, my hope is that uh, through the war on ignorance and through our common struggles that we have and showing the world and showing the people, the people owning the world, that we are capable creatures as free men, that they would set us free. This is my hope, and I, this is also what I think will happen in a very, very soon future, God willing. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. I mean, you provided so much more information on this subject than, uh, you know, I think we were um, prepared. <laughs> it was a very complicated subject. John, we just want to thank you so much, John, for joining us and providing your wealth of information on this. Uh, we're really kind of all just sitting here waiting for this to resonate in our in our energy field. I have a feeling I'm going to be re-listening to this Goldfish Report myself several times so that I could really understand everything that was discussed. It's way over my head and um, I enjoy it. I understand some things about it uh, from my research, but it's very complicated stuff, folks. And we're going to put links. I'm going to include links um, to this, uh, to some resources that you can go to that um, John may know or that other other people may uh, provide for us to do a little research on this for yourself. Keep tuning into the Goldfish Report so that we you can stay updated on. Maybe we'll have more um, resources. Now follow us too if you'd like on our Facebook page, uh, the Goldfish Report Facebook page, where we will be posting um, articles that are relevant to the issues we talk about on the Goldfish Report here. Like us, follow us, and you'll get your uh, updates in your, your news feed. Uh, also, we are still accepting um, proposals for uh, funding. So if you have a project that you would like to have considered for funding, you can do a pitch presentation and you can go to cbcglobaleducation.com to register for that. You can also always register to be part of our symposium, find out what's going on. You can uh, go to the uh, same website, cbcglobaleducation.com to, um, to register for that. This Wednesday, we have uh, question and answers. It's going to be every Wednesday with the ambassador. So so please go to thegoldfishreport.com, go to the contact section, and submit your questions for the ambassador on www.thegoldfishreport.com. And, uh, and also, uh, you, can, um, you can follow us uh, on those websites. Each of the websites have links to, to follow each of these uh, um, stories that we, that we are uh, reporting on. Um, and that's it for this edition of the Goldfish Report. This was a big one. We're going to have more in a series, I think, on this because there's just so much information on this subject and people, I think, once they get a taste of it, are going to want more of it so that the, everybody wakes up. So thank you for joining us, and this concludes this edition of the Goldfish Report. But we, what we do is we, we don't even see what's in front of us. And that's the first thing. So I think the best news is, is that if nothing else that we take away from this, this session today of the Goldfish Report is to start looking around at what we pick up and there's the word notice. When you go to a restaurant, 
and you take ketchup and you put it on your on your uh, French fries or whatever. Notice what the ketchup is made out of. When you look outside and you see a sign that says notice, start looking around and start realizing the world around you because that's where we go that that's where we start going brain dead. We're not really looking at the world in in a very positive way. We just take it for granted. We and that's the first element is the word notice. It's the most powerful thing that they have. When there's foreclosures on houses, they give you notice. When the IRS comes after you, they give you notice. Most people just ignore it. They say, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. And when you get something in the mail, you don't complete it. The second part of that is that you don't perfect the notice. In other words, if you ever notice when they give you a Social Security card, they don't have you sign for it, you've accepted the contract. You've accepted whatever. The bank will say, we're going to up your interest rates. You don't object. You don't listen to them. You just take it for granted. Now, I want to go a little bit into equity. Equity law... Just give me a second. I just wanted to state one thing. This is very important. Because also, as you notice, we're talking about notice here. <laughs> is that Satan, okay, cannot make you sin. He can tempt you, but you're the one committing it. So basically, in reality, okay, this is the same basic system. You know, you're, you're basically silently consenting or consenting with it mm -hmm. by not paying attention. Mm. Well, that's like saying hiding in plain sight. So we're not seeing it. We don't see it, though. It's hard to see, isn't it? Just no, 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 not only that, it's based on ignorance. That's why we're waging a war on ignorance, and that's why yes. we have this program that's to right. start with. So, but uh, please continue, John. No, so but just, actually, just, this is exactly, the ambassador's right on. They even give you notice in movies. They'll tell you in the movies what's going to happen. They, they look at right now in, in California, you see notice tsunami warnings. They give you the notice. How many people ignore it? Does, it, does that give them permission to do it then when they give you notice that gives them permission that gives because you've accepted their you've accepted their contract through your silence and your silence is notice i mean is is acquisition is, is it them permission to do what they want to do and i, I think so, John, quantum oh. physics they want our our thoughts to go out in the direction that they want because they know how powerful quantum thoughts are thoughts exactly. become things that's become things. I want to see if Radagast wants to jump in here. Brother Radagast has so much. He knows a lot about this, too. He's been so quiet sitting there. But I want to see if Radagast has a question or a comment or something he'd like to make on this subject. Because I know you know about this, brother. Yeah, no, I just I want to keep the flow going. The ambassador and John are doing such a good job. And, you know, other people are asking questions. It's staying on track. I just am I'm delighted to be a part of this. Okay, let me break something down here, what's called trust law. And everything is based on trust law. And this is really important. If I want to give you, I want to grant to you my ownership of the Brooklyn Bridge, I can actually give you a quick deed that grants you. But how much of the Brooklyn Bridge do I own? Zero. So you can't grant anything until you become the grantee. And in trust law, they don't even teach you this. But there are four parts to every trust, and everything that we have in this country and in the world today is based on trust law. There's called the grantee, the grantor, and then in, in, in real estate, it's the grantor settler, and then it's the beneficiary, and it's the trustee. A trustee is somebody that has something that they own that, well, let, let me say it this way. A trustee is some is somebody that has something in their possession that they do not own that they have to pay for. So if you get a speeding ticket, you become the trustee of that speeding ticket. You have something in your possession that you have to pay for that you don't own. So the highest form of ownership is to be the beneficiary. So when you have the beneficiary rights of something, you have the ownership of that. Now, most people aren't aware of that. So, um, like, for example, on foreclosures, 
it's always a trust. It's a deed of trust. But the trustee that forecloses doesn't have absolute right. They have limited rights. Do you follow what I'm saying? Does this make sense? So everything, like when the, when, when the ambassador is talking about the system of money or the birth certificate, it becomes a trust. And the state owns that trust, but we become the trustee, so we have to pay for it. And so, when you, so it's, it's a very complex system of trust law. John, one question either for you or for the ambassador. Um, this, people are under the illusion, I guess, that we, we live within countries' geographical borders. Is this an overarching system that covers the entire globe, or is it just you sitting in the United States? No, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. A, a, good, a good movie that really goes into this that has a lot of symbolism is called The Wizard of Oz. If you really look at The Wizard of Oz, The Wizard of Oz is actually talking about all this. And most people aren't even aware that, because remember in The Wizard of Oz, we have the power. In other words, the reason that Rome has this power is because we've abandoned it. Rome can, the Pope has no power over what we don't abandon, but they have to give us notice. And once they give us notice and we abandon, then we have no power. Quantum, what do you mean we don't abandon? What do you mean by abandon? Well, abandon means you don't perfect. In other words, you don't, you, in other words, okay, the next time you look at uh, a bill that's sent to you, Bringing the vision into a mission, this is a global mission of peace with the Goldfish Report on October 19th, 2015. I am Radagast, and I am joined by Steve, our European correspondent. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Uh, Sanjay, the wonder from down under. G'day, g'day, g'day. Just channeling Captain Hook again. Sherry Beal and a right to know. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Louisa, our media outreach, and we'll also in, uh, inform a little bit more about our guest. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and thanks, Radagast. We have a very special guest with us today. We have John Otrin. He's an actor and activist who's going to be joining us, and uh, we have, uh, I will give a little bit more of his uh, background and credits and once you introduce the ambassador. And of course, the voice of the dragon, the ambassador. Welcome, ambassador. Welcome, everyone. And uh, also welcome to our special guest. We had already a uh, quite long talk before we had this uh, uh, start of this program and getting acquainted and discussing these things. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to hear him present this to the people. And, uh, you know, and I would love to ask Luisa to start, uh, you know, if, and everyone else who's talking with uh, John and, and learn more about what uh, he has to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Ambassador. Today, we have a show that's just really going to be an eye-opener for everybody, and maybe a little shocking, in fact, because it's really kind of pulling, it's exposing the matrix that we live in and the control system that's on our planet and how we're um, really manipulated into giving silent consent to the control that's on the planet. Um, John Otrin is our guest today, and not only is he an actor, uh, he has his credits include Friday the 13th, uh, MASH, uh, Little House on the Prairie. He's been doing acting for many, many, many years, and I think what he says is credits that he's most proud of or his activism work that he's done in AIDS and um, the public service announcements that he's been involved in in helping to bring awareness and compassion to the whole AIDS uh, crisis. Uh, but what he is going to be talking with us about today is something that he has really is a seeker of knowledge and in, in some and in, in many times actors are this way where they're really seeking knowledge because they really want to understand something in a much deeper sense and a much deeper way. 
And we have a very, very deep subject to talk about today, which we can really only get into um, in an introductory manner because it's very complicated. And uh, so we're going to do our best to try to not overwhelm people because even I'm overwhelmed by it. And I tried a little bit last week to kind of talk about this whole uh, system of um, of uh, being, you know, bonded, uh, you know, by um, by the state and uh, by the government and other controllers. And um, John is going to go into detail about this. And, and just so everyone knows, the ambassador is extremely knowledgeable on this um, area as well. So there's going to be really a lot of information session going on with this um, report today. We're going to have our panelists um, ask questions. Uh, there's just an awful lot of information. So having said that, I want to introduce John and thanks for joining us, John. And I don't know, where do we begin? with this the, the beginning I guess <laughs> hello how are you um, let, uh, let, let me say something first here uh, I studied with a, a, a very very beautiful man who passed away his name was Corey Allen you might have remembered him from uh, rebel without a cause he was the man that was in the chicken race with uh, James Dean and he went over the cliff and he would say that actors are truthers and business people are actors. So as, as an actor, I, I'm always seeking and searching for the truth. And so that's where I begin, is looking for the truth. And it's very hard because the truth is really covered. And it's like peeling away an, in, an onion skin. You, it's hard to find it. You think you've got the truth and then you peel it away a little bit more and there's there's more to be peeled away. So where do we want to start? Do we want to start with admiralty law or equity law? Uh, we seem to be in, in admiralty law. And admiralty law is, is where we're located today. But the truth is, is admiralty law is just an offspring of equity law. And equity is the unwritten law. And admiralty law is the written law. There's the legal law, and then there's the unwritten law. Now, the difference between the two laws are, is that in admiralty law, there's always a winner and a loser, and it's adversarial. It's like one team against another team. Where in equity law, it's, there's no one winner. It could be, both people could be, uh, they could be equal. And does that make sense to people? Because does that make any, I mean, I'm sorry. Trying... Yeah, so what you're saying is the law that we have that, that in the United States or worldwide, that's what we're having the admiralty law at the moment. That's what you're saying. Right. And, and admiralty law is, there's a title. Mm -hmm. And in, that title means that you, you, you break it down that um, you become the trustee. And when you become the trustee of something, um, you are responsible for the payment of something that you don't own. For well, John, John, can we start with birth certificates? How do okay. we start? Is that a, how did that happen? How did we get started with that? Well, you see, admiralty law is is like the the law of the sea. So so you you are actually okay. So if you're in the a law of the sea, where is sea level? So let's start with sea level. Sea level used to be by the Corps of Engineers where sea level is at, at a beach level, but then they changed it. Sea level today is considered the highest point in the United States, in the United States, or the highest point in any country. So that means that you're actually under that jurisdiction. And if you're under that jurisdiction, you're by those rules. Now, if you go back to the sea, what happens if someone goes to sea? Stating that in the Zen times, we would see the biggest slavery on the history of mankind, but people would not realize that they are slaves. We are at this position right now. So basically, when you are born, that birth certificate becomes a bond. That bond is used by the central banks in each country to borrow against. Okay, And as you know, these central banks are privately owned corporations. So basically, they will borrow against it. And basically, also, the Vatican is the biggest debt holder on the planet. Okay? And so that's an institution that keeps the debt. Okay? And so in, in reality, in this sense, okay, it's, 
uh, you know, the whole system that we are looking at today. People can say, oh, it's all a fraud. No, it's a fr not a fraud because we're living it. We are silently consenting to it every single day. And as long as we're using the US dollar, as long as we are taking US, uh, social security checks, as long as we're taking food stamps, as long as we are you know, doing things, going to the hospital, opening bank accounts, and we cannot act without this number. And again, we go back to the 666 system of Antichrist, where basically <clears throat> you will not be able to do anything as, unless you accept the mark of the beast. And as long as you accept that you are a number, Okay, and without that number, you cannot do commas, you can do nothing, which is written that's supposed to be happening. And that's what's happening right now. So right now we are staring and living, you know, the, the system that was created by the Antichrist. Now people can say that, okay, what do, you know, the ambassador mean with Antichrist? And we talked about that earlier, me and John, that basically Antichrist was an entity that was existing for long far before Jesus came into place. And if you look at the Torah, you have, uh, you know, the serpent, which Christians think is the devil, but the serpent is the deceiver. Basically, in the Torah, the, the devil and the serpent is not the same entity. It's two different entities. It's in the Bible where it becomes the same entity. But in reality, this entity is the deceiver. You know, he has an Ar Aramaic and Arabic word which is called the jala, which means the deceiver, and he has a PhD in deception. And he is the mastermind behind this whole system. It is all... Is, is all created for a world domination, which was prophesied in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, long, long time ago. So what we are doing is that we're having some sick, twisted people around the world that actually is running this beast and basically controlling it. So that, that's why basically what we are trying to do here is just create an awareness of how actually things are in reality. But like I said, it's a very complicated matter I mean, me and John probably would we have to sit here and do many goldfish reports in hours to, to try to go the finer details. And in some cases, also, I uh, have to be restricted to what I say because, you know, I, uh, of certain man uh, reasons. But it's very important that, you know, it's important to see what is the fact, okay? And the fact of the matter is that this birth certificate uh, is basically one of the gates, okay, uh, for this fraud. Okay, may John can uh, maybe elaborate on what I was talking about. Absolutely, um, absolutely. One of the things that you said there was the uh, the trust. The largest trust in the world is the Catherine Trust, which is in the Vatican. And they hold they hold the uh, the birth certificate, which means they hold your pledged soul. And how did that happen? It happened this way back in 1917. They passed in the United States an act called Trading with the Enemy. And in 1933, they passed House Resolution 192, which made it illegal to have gold. And at that same time, they passed the Bank of Relief Act, which made everybody enemy of the states. So what happened is, is that since you cannot pay a debt with a debt, they had to find some way to make money work. And the way that they make money work is by pledging everybody's labor. So when you have a birth certificate, they actually pledge into the banks a million dollars. That's what runs the country. So that makes you your, your, your pledged labor. That's why you always hear the politicians talking about jobs, because they need pledged labor in order to make this economy work, because they can go out of the system. And... That's, that's why they're always talking about jobs. But the best way to get people to work is to take away jobs so people want something that they can't get. Instead of having professions, they want you to be working. And it's the, the demise of the middle class that way. So if I understand you correctly, John, you, the debt, you can't pay it with more debt, which the U.S. dollar is debt anyway. So you can either pay it in your work or gold. The right. Two. And, and so there is – so you cannot pay – you can only – so every time you, like for example, if you look at a dollar bill, you'll see that on a dollar bill, there's a little crest that says Bank of. But if you look at others, it says Federal Reserve System. And they're actually, uh, a $20 bill is actually one twentieth of a dollar. A $100 bill is actually one one hundredth of a dollar. Why is that? Well, what is, isn't, and isn't is. It's, 
a lot of what we look at is the deception. It's like, if you take, let's, let me give you an example of what the ambassador is talking about, why people are so unaware. If you take a, 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 a dish with cold water and you put a frog in it and you turn the heat up very, very slowly, the frog will cook. But if you take, a, if you take some hot water and throw a frog in it, it'll jump out. People don't even realize what's happening to them. They're unaware. And that's, that's really what the Goldfish Report is about, is to make people aware of what's really going on. Yeah, we really but are John, the frogs in the cooker. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Sanjay. We really are the frogs in the cooker, aren't we? <laughs> no, we are, because we're not even aware what's going on. We are. Go ahead, Sanjay. Yes, so, sir. John, basically, uh, from what I understand, this is very deep, because from the minute we're born, Without even understanding, we get given a number, a invoice number, and um, you know, and put into debt slavery as bonded labour. And um, as you said just then, the analogy of the pen. So that's when we're in the cold water when we're born, right? Like it's almost like a water birth. Right. And then uh, over time, they slowly through education and everything else heat up the water where they're customing us, like you know, making us a slave, conditioned, and acceptance. But, but it's always been there out to sea for seven years. They become lost at sea. So it's an abandonment. So everything goes back to what is, isn't, and isn't, is. It's, it's very complex. It's not a, an easy thing. But I would love for somebody to ask me some questions. So yeah, so, so what happened was we're actually, with the birth certificate thing, we are actually equity. Is that what it means, that we're uh, under this jurisdiction? Right, the birth. Let's, let's look at birth. When a ship births, there's, there's double meanings in, in, in our English language. So if you go into a court, you're going into the birth. You know what I'm saying? You're going, there's, in other words, let's go into a court. Court is like, like a tennis court. It goes back and forth. You're in admiralty. There's, it, it's, it's an interesting thing. So let's, let's start with the first thing. In admiralty law, there's capital letters and there's upper and lower case letters. If you ever notice on every tombstone, it's all capital letters. If you also look at your ships, they're on all capital letters. And if you look at your name on any of your, uh, let's say your driver's license or any of your credit cards, it's in all capital names. So if you're in all capital names, you can only be one of three things. You're either a corporation, Remember when Romney said people are corporations? You're a corporation, you're a, you're a vessel, or you're a tombstone. So your birth certificate is actually a death certificate. It's a tombstone. And most people aren't aware of that. That's interesting, John. And can you uh, just give us an idea how uh, we are in this matrix, and this is silent consent, and by, birth of this, by, by virtue of this certificate, this birth certificate, we have given silent consent. Can you explain how that works? Well, when you're born, you'll notice that a hospital will make you get a birth certificate. There's, there's two parts to that. There's the application for birth, which is signed by the mother and the doctor, and if you want an actually an application of your birth, the only three people that can get it are the doctor, the mother, and the person who's born. But then there's the birth certificate, which is in all capital letters, and that's the death certificate. So it's, it's an interesting facet. Admiralty law is um, it's very complex. And if I can... <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was, I was just going to jump in and um, say the definition of admiralty law because just uh, – but anyway, let me, let me go ahead and do that. I'm sorry. Okay. Admiralty law, also called maritime law, is a combination of U.S. and international law that covers all contracts, lorts, injuries, or offenses that take place on navig navigable waters. John. Correct. And, and, and if the sea level – is the highest point in the United States, let's say, and the sea level is the highest point in Europe, that means that all of the land in Europe and the United States, if they're traveling together, you're in, under that jurisdiction. So what does it mean for somebody who's listening to this? What does it mean for them that they're not realizing the basic cut well, of the church? Well, first of all, it means that 
by being under admiralty law, there, there's, a, there's a whole set of rules. And, and if you understand those rules, then you can actually navigate uh, successfully. But if you don't understand those rules, you, you think things are uh, up against you and then you get angry and, and then you start you know, to, to make waves. For example, a man never has a child. He's not uh, the father. He's actually considered the, uh, the, his child is his offspring, whereas the mother actually gives birth to a child. So in admiralty law, all children are bastards. They're actually, the father is actually the, the state. They actually own the child. That's so, why. They, yeah. So the state owns, and do they own us as well? That's exactly right. Right. So we're, we're chattels of the state. Right, because if we haven't taken our body back after seven years, they own us. We're, we're abandoned ships. So who owns us, John? Who owns us? The state. And who well, owns the state? Well, that's kind of complex. Uh, some people feel it's the banks that own the state now, or the state owns the banks. Uh, it, it, it varies. It goes back and forth. Yeah, maybe the ambassador can jump in um, also on that because I know he's he, you. You two yeah. gentlemen are quite an expert, and it's kind of hard to wrap our brain around it to understand who owns us. What are we? What are we? Uh, ba ba basically, it is created in a very confusing manner. Okay, so for example, first we have to go to the, uh, the situation that most countries are corporations. Okay, so uh, basically, the corporation can you know make a claim that they own you, and so basically, when we look at that situation, that you know countries are actually corporations, uh, and uh, so you know who owns us? That's the important question. Now, the, the important question is this way: we can take for example, myself, I do not have a birth certificate. Okay, is it because I lost it? No, because I never had a birth certificate. Does it mean that I was never born? Yes, I was born, but I don't have a birth certificate. On the other hand, my son, you know, which is born in another country, do have a birth certificate. Okay? And so the situation here is that when a person receives, when the birth certificate comes in, it's actually a bond. Okay? It's a promise of payment. It's a calculated income for the corporation. The corporation in itself goes through their central banks, okay, to other institutions like the Vatican Bank, where this bond will be kept because, you know, the Vatican is the master of the seas. So they are the head of the admiratory law system. So they will be the keepers of your soul. They're the owner of your soul. Maybe John can go more deeper into that, uh, how that whole based in. But basically, it, so you are borrowed again. So when you go into prison, you know, you're defaulting on your payments. And that's why you have these years that you have like a, a criminal record and after that it will disappear and so on and so on, depending on what type of crime you're doing. But as, as well, when you go to prison, you will have to work there, okay? So in the system, is all based on slavery. And, uh, you know, a very wise prophet uh, 1,800 years ago almost was making a prophecy that... Also based on what he said, the Quran and every, everything is prepaid. Because you can't be in debt without being prepaid. Now, we didn't even discuss this part. There's a thing called accepted for value. When you accept it, there, technically, everything that is made is already prepaid for. Because in the, it says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be saved for your sins. Well, that same process is in our commerce. And that means everything is prepaid. It, it, it's a very complex system that it takes a lot to really listen to and study it's not i understand i understand now as the ambassador says the word jal jal is like a net and the in hinduism there's another word called maya right it's all about this materialistic world where there's no end to desire it exactly. almost feels the same it's so deep that you yeah you can never find the end of it like i mean you can't pay debt with debt but this is why they're getting us to create credit cards upon credit cards upon credit cards. And we're using credit, which is debt, to well, pay our bills. Notice this. You'll, people, like for example, I'll give an example of something that occurred. Uh, GMAC mortgage went bankrupt. They had to send everybody that got a loan what's called a B10 form. 
that B10 form is, if you file a B10 form, uh, that means that you're the creditor. That means you're the creditor. So when you signed an application for a loan on a house, it's your signature that created the money because the banks are actually fictions. There's no real person there. So your, your signature actually creates the money. Your pledged labor creates the money. Have you ever gone to a shopping center and you see someone there collecting applications for credit cards? They have to yes. applications on Wall Street. Right. It's called securitization and a forensic audits. It, it's very complex. John, can, can you explain I, I, to us, or maybe the ambassador, what this yeah, training I want, is? Yeah, I want to say something here very important, is that that's why it's so hilarious when you see people talking about communism. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because like communism is such a great evil and blah, 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 blah. And the problem is this way is that if you look at yourself in the mirror and then you ask yourself that what is communism? What is this what we are doing? The slavery that we are, the tyranny that we are under? It's, it's, it's like the, the same evil. Okay. It's nothing that is better. It's nothing that is less. The, it's like I used to say many times, like the, uh, the philosophy of communism is a very good idea. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with people. Okay. Why? Because in the communist world, everyone's supposed to be equal. And then some people were not equal and people wanted not to be equal. And then people start inspiring things. So the best way to keep people uh, slaves is by keeping them dumb, not knowing what's going on, making them feel that they are free, making them feel that they have a democracy, making them feel that they have an opinion, and in reality, it's just an illusion. And, and this is why I'm stated many times that we are living in an illusion of democracy. We're living in an illusion of being free. In reality, we are not. And at the same time, it's like, even you know, when you are put in a concentration camp or in isolation or something like that, they can, like, capture your body but your mind is always free it's like i usually say the dream world when you're dreaming during night times is very exciting especially for me i'm a person that has a lot of dreams and you know i'm feeling more free in the dream world than i feel in the normal world on the you know here on the planet it's just that certain things in the dream world you can't experience that you can do in in this world that we are here but i think this is very important to realize what we're trying to teach now with this lesson in this first interview, I think we should do more interviews with, uh, with John because he has a great, uh, you know, sea of knowledge here. But it, it, it is the understanding of the system. I mean, the system is very simple in reality. We are being born. When we are born, we have a birth certificate. That birth certificate is sent uh, to, through our central banks to the banking institution at the uh, Vatican Bank. They will borrow money from some entity okay that particular entity is actually the one that owns everything and when we talked earlier we talked about that basically basically the bible of the torah uh, and uh, so was of the Quran, because it's also recognized as three scripture uh, two scriptures uh, is basically based the admiral law of the system is based on that concept and so basically what is happening here is that you're having a divine law that is twisted against us, okay? And so what, what, what is clear in this whole thing is that is this look and opinion about debt, okay? If you have a debt, you cannot come to heaven. If you have a debt, okay, you, you, you will have to be cleansed. If you have a debt, okay, so basically you are slave to the person that you owe the money to. This is all from these three scriptures. Okay? So basically this is the fundament for the world control of the whole situation. And maybe, Jan, you could uh, uh, you know, explain a little bit more about this free trustership and how it works. Yes, okay. There's one thing that, there's some good news on this though. And the good news is that there's a word called notice, but people don't look at that word. Notice, N-O-T-I-C-E. They have to give you notice, and most people ignore the notice. 
Yeah, I would be willing to bet that if you look in your living room and you take the cushions up, you'll see, um, they'll tell you what the cushions and the couch is made out of, and you'll see the biggest word there will be notice, but people ignore it. It's right in front of us. A police officer, when they stop you, they don't just give you a ticket. They give you grace. They give you an opportunity. They give you notice. They say, do you know how fast you are traveling? They allow you to actually say something. See, everything is based on equity, equity law. Even admiralty law is part of equity. And if you really look at it, 